Hello, my name is Hugo Aran Gonzalez Castilla, and today I'm going to present you the case study talking about the dengue. Now, for the case study, we're going to explain the clinical case, giving details on the symptoms the patient presented. So now, our case study is about a man named Roberto, who went to the roast beef outdoors with his friends, where the next day he begins to suffer from the following symptoms. At the first day and the day after the roast beef, he felt fever of exactly of 39 degrees. Then, at the next day that he started with his medication, treating like if it was a common flu or just uh, a respiratory infection, at the next day he had low immune defenses and then he had to be translated to the nearest hospital because he was really bad. Then he started feeling now when he was in the in the hospital, he started feeling dizziness and nausea. He couldn't stand up because one day at 3 a.m. he stand it up because he want he wanted to go to the restroom. And once he stand it up, he fell down and couldn't stand up anymore until the next day when his partner helped him. And he had no hunger. And all of these symptoms presented not at the not at the same time. They presented them in, in different spaces of time. So our case study is about Roberta. Now that we know the case of study of Roberto and taking into consideration all of the situations and symptoms he put himself on and presented, we need to know first what is the dengue. Dengue is a disease caused by a virus and it is transmitted to people by the bite of the disease carrying mosquito. So one basic and important thing that we need to take into consideration before anything else is that dengue is not transmitted from one people to another people. So this specific virus is transmitted only by the bite of a carrying mosquito. Uh, I mean, uh, this is carrying mosquito. So there are three different manifestations of the disease, which are dengue fever, hemorrhagic fever, and hemorrhagic shock. Now we need to start investigating the illness diagnosis and its treatment. Now for the illnesses and diagnosis on its treatment, we need to know that patients typically present fever, headache, body age, and sometimes rash spreading from the trunk. So the most common symptom of a mild dengue are the following, nausea, vomiting, rash, acts, and pains. And also as the image present information, we need to know that there is also eye pain, rash, muscle pain, bone pain, nausea, vomiting, headache, and joint pain. Now, the treatment for the mild dengue, actually there is no specific medication to treat dengue, but there is medication to treat the symptoms of dengue. But if you only think that you have dengue, you should take care and take into consideration the following tips. First, see a healthcare provider if you develop a fever or have symptoms of dengue. You need also to rest as much as possible, take paracetamol to control fever and relieve pain, do not take aspirin or ibuprofen, and drink plenty of fluids to stay hydrated. Symptoms of dengue can become severe within a few hours. Severe dengue is a medical emergency, so now we need to take into consideration the four following points or key points about the severe dengue is that Severe dengue only appears about 1 in 20 people who get sick of dengue and it is very serious because it can also result in shock, internal breathing and even death and you are more likely to develop a severe dengue if you have had a dengue infection before and the most at risk population of everyone are the infants and pregnant women. Symptoms of severe dengue the following are the warning signs of severe dengue and they appear between 24 and 48 hours, that is, one day and two days after your fever has gone away. Any of the following symptoms are for an immediately emergency travel to a local clinic or emergency room. The following are stomach or belly pain, tenderness, vomiting at least three times in 24 hours, bleeding from the nose or gums vomiting blood or blood in the stool, 
feeling tired, restless, or irritable. So all of these five specific symptoms are needed to be some of the most important warning signs that you have as if we're dengue. And those specific symptoms are for an immediately emergency travel to a local clinic or emergency room. Now for the following slide, we're going to present you the type of immune response that can be two types, active or passive. But before anything else, we need to know first what is adapted immunity, and it is divided into sections that is naturally acquired and artificially acquired. In the naturally acquired section, we have that they are both types, active and passive. In the active section, we know that antigens enter the body naturally. That means that bacteria or antigens are transmitted with other different type of media that are naturally and the passive are antibodies that pass from mother to fetus via placenta or to infant via the mother's milk that is that the only way to be passive is from one mom to his own child so now in the artificially acquired section the other part of the adaptive immunity we know that there are also two types the active and the passive in the active one, it's basically the same. Antigens are introduced in vaccines, and that is artificially in types in other types of vaccines that's, that are created by scientists. And the passive one are preformed antibodies in, in immune serum are introduced by injection, also known as artificial. So an infected person experiences the acute symptoms of dengue when there is a specific high level of the virus in the bloodstream, that is, the immune system. So, the immune response eliminates the virus, leading to recovery. So, it's basically an active immune response. Now, for this slide, we're going to show you how to prevent contagion. The correct and most useful ways to prevent contagion of dengue are the following ones. Also, lead by the next slide that the first tip is use insect repellent. With this insect repellent, we are going to repel, as its own name says, any type of insect that could get near into you or into your family. Always follow the product label instructions. There are some specific instructions on the label of the product that can be a warning sign or any instructions to put on this insect repellent. Do not spray repellent on the skin on their clothing because it's not going to work you need to put over the cloth because insects will be really repelled if it's on the cloth now for the second slide we have that you need to apply sunscreen first and insect repellent second wear long sleeved shirts and long pants use screen on windows repair holes in screens to keep mosquitoes out and this is very important. You need to once a week empty items that can hold water because mosquitoes lay eggs near, near the water. And all of these tips and considerations are really helpful if you want to prevent contagion of any type of dengue. Then we have three critical defense barriers that can be presented in our immune system. The first one is chemical barriers. There are some microbes that penetrate the body's protective and encounter a variety of chemical substances that may prevent their own growth. And its main principal functions of the chemical substances is to harm or destroy invaders and produced by naturally occurring bacteria. Now, as a second critical defense barrier, we have the cellular defenses. That is, if any infectious agent is not successfully repelled by the chemical, the previous barrier presented, and the physical barrier, the one that is going to be next this one, it'll encounter cells that will eliminate foreign substances that enter the body. And now as a third one, we have that the external barriers are skin and the mucous membrane linings of the respiratory, gastrointestinal and genitone urinary tracts that provide the first line of defense against invasion of microbes or parasites. So its own name of each of the critical defense barriers explain its own and only function that is prevent the 
occurring of bacteria in our body. Now we need to know the importance of the skin in the immune system because skin acts like if it was the walls of a castle because it's an unfriendly environment for many microbes because the skin surface is likely acidic and some areas are quite dry. Neither of these conditions suits many microbes which like moisture and a less acidic environment. Also, it can be also said that the skin's already populated by good soldiers. There are bacteria that call skin as a home, effectively hanging out a no trespassing sign for other types of bacteria that cannot be right there because it would be nauseous for our health. Now we have a statistical data that is the global incidence of dengue has grown dramatically in res recent decades, having an estimated of 100 to 400 million infections each year. Early detection with super dengue and access to proper medical care lowers fatality rates of severe dengue to below 1%. And now for some local data is that in Mexico, 69% of confirmed cases of dengue in 2019. Now, having some statistical data, is that the global incidence of dengue has grown dramatically in recent decades, having an estimated of 100 to 400 million infections each year. The early detection with severe dengue and access to proper medical care lowers the fatality rates of severe dengue to below 1%. So it is really important to be effectively and rapidly in access to a proper medical care because it will low fatality rates of severe dengue. And now having some local data says us that a 69% of confirmed cases of dengue in 2019 here in Mexico correspond to Jalisco, Veracruz, Chiapas, Quintana Roo, and, and Oaxaca. Now that we have all of the information really studied and learned, we have a conclusion that dengue is a disease caused by a virus and it is transmitted by the bite of that disease carrying mosquito. So it is not transmitted from one person to another. And that's what actually happened to Roberto. Even if Roberto had contact with other people, he didn't was infected by human transmission nor infected other people because this disease is transmitted by mosquitoes so even if he had contact with all of his friends his friends are not going to have dengue because having contact but they are going to be probably infected by dengue virus because they probably had also been bitten by this specific mosquito so after the elaboration investigation of this dengue virus now we know some important facts and prevention tips to take account into so thanks for your attention my name is Gonzalez Castilla this was the case study of the dengue virus in the next slide there are the following references that we used for our presentation thank you